In this video I'm gonna show you how to make our player shoot fireballs. Let's go! If you don't have the project from episode 3, don't worry, I'm gonna put the github link in the description. Alright, to start off let's open the player movement script. First off I'm gonna delete the onCollisionEnter2D method because we don't need it anymore. Then we're gonna create a public boolean method called canAttack. And inside we're gonna define when exactly the player will be able to attack. In this case I'm gonna say that the player will be able to attack when the horizontal input is equal to zero, which means that he's not moving left to right. And he's also grounded, and he's also not on a wall. If either one of these conditions is not met, this method will return false and the player will not be able to attack. Alright, we're done with the script. Now let's go back into Unity and create another script which we're gonna call player attack. When you are done, attach it to the player object and open the script. In here let's create two references, one for the animator and another one for the player movement component. Then let's create a private float called attack cooldown and add serialized field in front of it. This value will represent how much time needs to pass before we can fire the next shot. Now in the awake method let's use get component to get references to the animator and the player movement. When you're done, make an update method and inside it let's check if the left mouse button is pressed. If it is, we're gonna initiate our attack. And just for this purpose, let's create a new method called attack. And call the method right underneath the if statement. Now we need to make sure that enough time has passed since the last shot before attacking. And for this purpose, I'm gonna introduce a new float called cooldown timer. Now in the if statement, let's also check if the cooldown timer is bigger than the attack cooldown, which means that enough time has passed to fire the next shot. Now let's see what happens with the cooldown timer. So basically we're gonna increment it on every frame by time dot delta time inside the update method. And when we attack, the cooldown timer is gonna be reset to zero. Now there is a small issue here, and that's the fact that when we start the game the cooldown timer will be equal to zero, which means that the player will not be able to attack straight away. That's why we're gonna put equals mathf.infinity here, but you can use any big number, doesn't matter. Alright, we handle the delays. Now, let's make sure that the player is in a state that allows him to attack. And we will do that by adding the player movement dot can attack method to the if statement. Next thing that we need to do is play the attack animation when attacking. And we're gonna do that by saying anim dot set trigger attack inside the attack method. We're done with coding for now, so let's go back into Unity and create the new attack animation. Choose the player object and open the animator window. Now create a new trigger and call it attack. Make sure that it has the exact same name as in the code. Now open the animation window and create a new animation. I'm gonna call mine attack, you can call it whatever you like. Now zoom in on the player, press the red recording button and go to the player's sprite render. Choose the attack 01 sprite. Now move the timeline by 5 milliseconds and choose the attack 02 sprites and move the timeline 5 milliseconds again and choose the attack 03 sprite. And that's the entire animation. Now let's go to the animator window and create the transitions. First create a transition from idle to attack. Choose the transition, go into the settings and set 0 to everything and then disable the exit time. Then add a new condition and choose the attack trigger. Then create a new transition, this time from attack to idle. Select it and in the settings set the exit time to 1 and the rest of the settings to 0. Last thing that we need to do is to go to the animator window, double click the attack animation and turn off loop time. And now you can press play and test how this looks in the game. You can also select the player and change the attack cooldown value. If you make this value bigger, you will be able to attack less often. And vice versa, if this value is small, you're gonna be able to attack faster. Alright, that's it for the animation. Now let's create the actual fireball. So I'm gonna create a new object, call it fireball and put a sprite render component on it. Next we're gonna assign fireball01 to be the default sprite. This fireball looks a bit too big, so I'm gonna make the scale 0.7 on all axes. Now we can create a new script, I'm gonna call it projectile and I'm gonna attach it to the fireball object. Let's also add a box collider here and make it a trigger and a rigid body to the component and let's not forget to put the mass and the gravity down to zero. And the final component that we'll need here is an animator, so let's add that as well. Let's take a minute to clean up a bit. Go to the animation folder and create a folder for the player animations. And drag all of them in there. Now let's create a new folder and call it fireball. 
Inside we need to create a new animator controller and we'll call it Fireball as well. Once you're done, select the Fireball object and drag the controller that you just created into the correct field. Now you can open the animation window and create a new animation that we're gonna call Fireball Idle. And another one called Fireball Explode. When you're done, go to the Fireball Idle animation, press the red record button and set the sprite for the first frame to be Fireball 01. Then move the time frame to 5 milliseconds and select Fireball 02, then to 10 milliseconds and select Fireball 03. Now move the time frame to 15 milliseconds and select Fireball 2 again, and to 20 milliseconds and select Fireball 01 again. This is gonna create a nice looping animation for the Fireball when it's flying around. Alright, now let's go to the animator window and create a new trigger called Explode. This trigger will go off every time our Fireball will hit anything and it will also cause the animation to change from idle to explode, so let's create a transition for that. Also, let's make sure to double click on fireball idle and enable loop time, and double click on fireball explode and disable loop time. That's because we want the explode animation to play only once, then stop. Alright, now let's select the transition from idle to explode. Set the condition to be the explode trigger, then go into the settings, set everything to zero and disable exit time. Now let's go back into the animation window, select Fireball Explode animation and press the red record button. The sprite on the first frame will be Explosion 01. Then, like previously, I'm gonna put a delay of 5 milliseconds between them. And then just pick the following sprite until you reach Explosion 06. When you're done, double click the projectile script and let's do some coding. The first thing that we're gonna need here is a private float variable called speed. And you guessed it, it will determine the speed of the projectile. Like usually I'm gonna put serialized field in front of it so we can tweak it from Unity. The next thing that we'll need is a private boolean called hit, and also a box collider 2D reference and an animator one. You can see that Visual Studio is complaining that the name collider is ambiguous, so I'm just gonna change it to box collider with a small b. Now, in the awake method, as we usually do, let's use the getComponent method to get references to the animator and the box collider 2D components. Next, let's create an update method. First of all, we're gonna check if our fireball hits something. If that's true, we're gonna return and not execute the rest of the code. In here, let's create a float called movement speed, which is gonna be equal to speed multiplied with time.deltaTime. Then we're gonna use transform.translate to move the object on the x axis by movement speed and the y and z axis are gonna be equal to zero. And that's it for the update method. Now let's create an on trigger enter 2D method. In here we're gonna check if our fireball hit any other object. If it did, we're gonna do the following things. First of all, we're gonna set the hit boolean to true. Second, we're gonna disable the box collider. And finally, we're gonna play the explode animation by setting off the explode trigger on the animator. Alright, we're done with this part. Now let's create a public void called setDirection, which is gonna take in a float parameter called Direction. And we're gonna use this method every time we shoot, to tell the fireball to fly either left or right. Also, we will use this method to reset the state of a fireball, which means that we will make hit be equal to false, and we will enable the box collider. Another thing that we need to do here is to make sure that the fireball game object is active. So we're gonna say game object set active true. And I'm gonna explain why in a minute. When you're done with this, make sure to go to the beginning of a script and create a new private float called direction. Now take this variable and put it in the movement speed calculation. This will allow us to determine in which direction the fireball will fly. Now the final thing is that we need to take this direction variable and make it equal to the parameter that we are getting inside the set direction method. This is why I call the parameter underscore direction, so that its name is not equal to the name of the local variable. Now let's go back into Unity for a second so I can explain what we need to do next. So now we can make our fireballs go left and right, but they also need to be turned in the right direction, otherwise it will just look weird if the fireball is flying left but looking right. So that's the next thing that we need to implement. Now, make a float called localScaleX and make it equal to transform.localScale.x. Now, we will create an if statement where we will check if the sign of localScaleX is not equal to a direction. 
which means that the fireball is not facing the right way. In this case, we will take local scale x and we will make it equal to minus local scale x. So we basically flip it. Now, to finish it off, we're gonna say that transform.local scale equals to a new vector that has local scale x for the x axis. And for the y and z axis, we want to maintain the same values that the transform already has. And the final thing that we need to do here is create a private void called deactivate. It will help us deactivate the fireball after the explosion animation has finished. Now go back into Unity, select the fireball object, open the fireball explode animation and select the last frame of it. Now we need to add an animation event to this last frame. And we can do this by clicking this button here. Animation events are extremely useful in Unity. And that's because they allow you to call certain methods from your code inside animations. Like, let's say for example, at the end of your attack animation you want to hurt the enemy. Or, in this case, at the end of the explode animation of the fireball we want to deactivate the fireball. So, this is exactly what we're gonna do now. Press the function field in the top right corner and select the deactivate method. And that's it for the fireball behavior. Now, let's select the player and go into the player attack script to actually make the shooting work. In this script, find the attack method and right at the end of it we're gonna use something called object pulling for our fireballs. Now, let me explain what object pulling is and why you should be using it. If you saw other tutorials on this topic, I'm pretty sure a lot of people use instantiate. And that means that every time when you fire a shot, you need to create a new object. And when our projectile hits something, we need to destroy it, because it's not longer necessary. Sounds easy and straightforward, right? But let's imagine, for example, that your player has an automatic rifle, or even a minigun, which fires basically hundreds or maybe even thousands or shot of shots per minute. If you use instantiate and destroy, in this case, the performance of your game is going to tank very quickly. Object pulling on the other hand requires us to already have some bullets created. They will just be deactivated so you don't see them. And every time you fire a shot we're gonna activate the bullet and give it the direction in which we want it to fly. When the bullet hits something we don't destroy it, we just deactivate it and reset it so it's ready to be used again. I'm not gonna go into more detail on this topic but if you want more information on object pulling let me know, I can send you a couple articles or videos. Alright, back to our game. Let's go back into Unity and create a new object called Fireball Holder. Now, reset its position to be 0 on all axes. Now, take the Fireball object and put it underneath the Fireball Holder. Now, press Ctrl D or Command D to duplicate it 9 times. After that, you can select all of them and deactivate them. Now, we can go back to the player attack script, so make sure to open that. The first thing that we'll need to make it work is a private transform called Firepoint, which is basically the position from which the bullets will be fired. Next we'll need an array of game objects called Fireballs. And inside this array we will place all the 10 Fireballs that we just created. Now we can go into the attack method and implement the necessary code. And just so you understand the logic, every time we will attack we will take one of the Fireballs and reset its position to be the position of the Firepoint. That's the first step. The second step is to get the projectile component from the fireball and use set direction to send it in the direction in which the player is facing. And to calculate correctly in which direction the player is facing, I just used the sign of a player's local scale on the x-axis. Now let's go back into Unity, assign all the variables and try to make it work. First of all, we need to make the firepoint object. And it's very important that this object is a child of the player object. To make this object easily distinguishable, let's select it, press this button in the top right corner and select an icon for it. Now that you can see it easily, drag it around until it's positioned in front of a player. It's very important not to place it too close to the player, otherwise our fireballs will just hit the player and we don't want that. You can also rename this object to Firepoint like I did. Now select the player object and drag the Firepoint object into the Firepoint field. Now we need to drag all the fireballs into this array. You could do it one by one if you are a masochist, but let me show you an easier way. Make sure that the player object is selected and now press the lock button in the top right corner. This is gonna make sure that your player object is gonna stay selected even if you select another object in the hierarchy. Now go to the hierarchy and select all the fireballs. Once that's done, drag them all into the fireballs array. When you are finished, unlock the player object by pressing the lock button again. Alright, now we can finally shoot fireballs.
As you can see it's working relatively fine but because the pulling is not implemented we only can shoot one fireball. This is obviously not how it's supposed to work so let's fix that. Let's go back to the player attack script. In here we will create a private integer method called find fireball and let's make it return 0 by default. Next up we'll need a for loop that's gonna loop through all the fireballs in the array that we created previously. And inside of it we're gonna check if the fireball with the index y is not active in the hierarchy. And if it's not active indeed then we can just return its index to the attack method. Basically saying hey fireball number 3 is not active so you can take it and use it. Now inside the attack method just replace 0 with the find fireball method. Now let's go back into Unity and see how it works. I think it's gonna be more fun this time. If you press the mouse key quickly now you can see that you can shoot a lot of fireballs, basically raining terror on your enemies. If your attack speed is slower or faster than what I have on the screen right now, make sure to adjust the attack cooldown. As you can see mine is 0.25 right now. Alright, there is one final issue that I want to solve before we finish this episode. Currently, if one of our fireballs flies off the screen and it doesn't hit anything, it will never be reset, basically flying on for infinity. And that's a problem. So let's open the projectile script and add a new private float called lifetime. This variable will represent for how many seconds the projectile has been active. And to calculate that, we're gonna increase it by time.delta time inside the update method. Next, we're gonna check if the lifetime is bigger than 5, and if it is, we're gonna deactivate the object. I'm gonna point out that 5 is just an abstract value, you can change it if you want, you can make it bigger or smaller if you think it's appropriate. And the last step of this tutorial is just to reset the lifetime to 0 every time we set the direction of the fireball. Now let's press play and try to shoot a couple fireballs to the right where we don't have a wall. You will wait for a bit and you'll see that after 5 seconds they will be deactivated, which is exactly what we wanted. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching and congratulations on finishing the fourth part of this series. In the next episode I think we will change the graphics up a bit because I'm tired of looking at this blue background and black walls. So stay tuned, press the subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss it and see you in the next episode.